<laughs> it is day 19 of Kamala Harris giving basically no access to the mainstream press and continuing to ride this beautiful wave she's on, riding high on manufactured enthusiasm for the most radically left-wing ticket in American history. Kamala and Tim Walls all smiles as they climb in the polls, totally unvetted with a complicit media that's happy to look the other way as Kamala builds up her campaign and builds up all this enthusiasm while refusing to answer pretty much any questions at all that could damage her approval numbers because she can't do that. Kamala is getting off scot-free after doing a barely one-minute gaggle outside of her plane, the only thing she's done in 19 days that's had any transparency. And in that 60 seconds or so, really all she did was indicate that at some point in the future, she's going to actually do a real interview with somebody. Take a look. There's been a lot of questions about when you're going to sit down for your first interview since being the nominee. Do you I've, have any I've talked that? to my team. I want us to get an interview scheduled before the end of the month. Thank, Thank you. you. What you, you, you make about attack on your husband's face? Thank, Thank you so you. much. That was on August 8th, by the way. By the end of the month. Oh, okay. So you need 23 days to figure out how to put your butt in a chair and take a couple questions, huh? And they're letting her get away with this is the worst part. As Trump gets assailed for actually facing the media firing range for an hour at his home, this is what he gets for doing the right thing. Donald Trump proved once again today that he is not smart enough to do a news conference. I think that what was on display yesterday was just the pure incoherence. It's much more glaring to people uh, that how, how many failures, failures, cognitive failures Donald Trump has, especially when he stands in an unscripted way. You're not going to tolerate the sexism and the racism that he spews. In his mind, the truth is whatever he wants it to be. And that's what you heard today. Yeah. Makes you wonder why anybody talks to the media. Why would you do it? Kamala doesn't have to do it. Where's the upside? Oh, you know, kind of the obligation to the American people. Who cares about them? Talk about power here. Trump's unhinged. He's crazy. Blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, it appears Tim Walls is writing the headlines for his own tickets coverage. Earlier this week, Walls, a couple times, labeled their run as one of joy. Here it was. Thank you for bringing back the joy. Never underestimate the power of this. She does it all with a sense of joy. You want to know how fake it all really is? Immediately after saying this, we're now seeing joy or some version of that word scattered all across the supposedly unbiased media coverage of the Kamala campaign. And we begin tonight with joy. The joy felt by Americans backing the Harris Walls ticket. You could just sense the power in the hall, and it was the power of joy. From the get-go, get -go, you could really see joy and exuberance. You have, on one side, hope, optimism, and joy. You heard, uh, you know, Governor Walls talk about, you know, joy and all that. One side offering powerful, infectious, joyful, warrior vibes. And it wasn't just the cable morons. It's all over print coverage as well. CNN calling them happy warriors online. Washington Post, a joyful message. New York Times, joy is fueling the campaign. Oh, it's so positive. It's so wonderful. This slow descent into Marxism, we can't wait. It must be really easy to run for president in a two-party system with the entire media apparatus in your corner. You can't imagine. 